What's up, y'all? Welcome back to the MG Cup Series here on NBCSN. We're at Rockingham Speedway for the second to final race of the season. Chris Mack is on pole with Jeff Gordon starting on his outside, and man, what a tight championship battle this is going to be. All, excuse me, all three championship contenders starting up. I apologize once again. It's all all three championship contenders starting right towards the front well two of the three at least Jamie McMurray a little further back but he's still right up near the front Chris Mack coming through turns three and four the pace car about to make the hard left turn on the pit road there it goes now we're coming down the front stretch and we're about to go green Chris Mack leads us to the line the green flag is in the air we're racing for Rockingham Turn two down the back stretch for the first time. Jeff Gordon took the lead there, but Chris Mack trying to back up his entry and get a good exit off of turn three. Look at Jimmy Johnson right on his back bumper. Jeff Gordon's going to lead the first lap of the day. Mack pulls to the outside, and now he's going to try to pass him back on the high side here. This is a multi-groove racetrack. He can use either lane work, as you'll see throughout the day. And heading through turns three and four. Looking further back, Bobby Labonte on the high side. Tried to get it to work. He did get a good run down the front straightaway. Car right behind him as well. Battle for second between teammates. Jimmy Johnson dives to the bottom. Takes the spot away from Jeff Gordon who tried to use the high line but just couldn't get grip up there. Joe Nemechek right behind him. He's, Gordon's lucky that the 0-1 didn't pull out and try to pass him. And then further back it's a swarm and then Jamie McMurray behind most of these guys he's diving to the inside of Ryan Newman back here now McMurray they're three wide in front of the 42 but McMurray now in the middle of that they're side by side still heading down the back straightaway cars are starting to spread out a little bit and this field stays aggressive I'll tell you that every one of these drivers will be aggressive for any spot that's the MG Cup Series racing for you. Heading down the back stretch. Wants to get trouble in the back. Big crash back there. Three, four, five car. Oh my goodness. Up and over. Jeff Green. Tumbling. Rolling. Wildly down the back straightaway. A big time flip for the 43. As he lands up against the wall. And comes, comes down on all four wheels. And. That was a wild wreck. Let's take a look at what just happened here. The 43 of Jeff Green was the first car I saw get sideways here. Goes down, collects J.J. Yaley in the 11. They go into the outside wall. The 77 of Brendan Gaughan goes down the track, collects the 49 and the 21 of Ricky Rudd. Ken Schrader slides down. There's Brian Vickers getting a little bit of contact there. He's going to slide down. Hermie Sattler goes into the back of him with nowhere to go. Derek Cope has nowhere to go. He's going to fly right into this. The 72 as well. And then bang! Boris said right into the door of the 43. Said some flipping wildly down the back straightaway. Luckily, Jeff Green was able to get out of the car under his own power. But still a hard hit and a wild wreck for the 43 driver. Chris Mack, your race leader at the moment. Welcome back to the MG Cup Series here on NBCSN. The 86 of Chris Mack is your race leader. And seems to have a really fast race car here today as you see him weaving back and forth trying to heat up his tires. But behind him in second place right now is Jimmy Johnson. And Jimmy going for a championship probably won't cut that 86 driver any slack. He wants to open up as big of a points gap as he possibly can. And with the 24 right behind him he has to win. Green flag back in the air. 
And here comes the 8 to the inside. Dale Jr. got a good restart. So did Joe Nemechek. Jeff Gordon trying to take it three wide through the middle. Chris Mack got a little loose. He's going to slide up the racetrack. Here comes Jimmy Johnson on his high side. He's getting split. He's in the middle of three wide. Round goes Johnson. Jimmy Johnson spins down the back straightaway. Noses into the inside wall. Jeff, uh, Jamie McMurray up into the outside wall. And Jeff Gordon is going to have to settle for sixth place on the race back to the yellow flag. <clears throat> a big time championship implication here from Rockingham Jimmy Johnson one of the fastest cars here today noses into the outside wall that could potentially ruin his championship run and I know Chris Mack did not mean to do that he's got to feel absolutely horrible right now let's take a look at the replay he's going to come up the racetrack just kind of drifts up the track but he turned that 48 car I don't think he meant to do that, but I know it looks intentional, but he was in the middle of three wide. I think, let's try to uh, get another angle of it here. I can't tell. Looks like he was pretty close to being clear and just wiped out that 48 machine. I know Chris isn't the type of guy to just randomly do that on purpose to anybody. Let's look out of the back bumper of the 48 car. <clears throat> Wow. I mean, he just got sent. I don't see any reason for him to take him out intentionally. Let's go on board with the 86. And we have some radio communications as well. As we watch it again, it looked like he just kind of misjudged it a little bit. He was trying to slide in line behind him. Let's listen in. Oh man, I wasn't trying to turn him. I was just trying to slide in behind him. I didn't mean to. Uh, I just. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry, guys. That's uh, that was Chris Mack over the radio. Very apologetic about what just happened there. So that confirms our suspicion that he he didn't mean to do that on purpose. Look, he's in the middle of three wide. He's the car is obviously loose off of the corner he's trying to gather it up he's trying to keep it straight doesn't want to be three wide heading into the next turn cars are splitting him high and low so he's got to try to squeeze in behind the 48 car and it just didn't work and he turned jimmy johnson and jimmy i know he's going to be upset about that but he's got to think bigger picture because he's still the championship points leader um coming into this race so he, he can try to regain as many spots as possible he'll retain that lead even if it's not by as many points but doesn't look like he'll have a chance to uh lock it up here today really just an unfortunate unfortunate turn of events for the 48 driver in the strange circumstances for him to get spun like that racing for the lead but you never know what can happen in racing or especially in the mg cup series and we just saw it right there let's go back to this view and watch it once again Man, that was a really tough break. And then, watch this. Ricky Rudd. There's Scott Riggs making contact with the 48. That's where he got the left side damage from. Ricky Rudd and Ken Schrader go up into the outside wall after making some contact further back. On the race back. So, multiple cars with damage here. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back after this. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back to the MG Cup Series where the green flag is back in the air after a quick caution for Jimmy Johnson and Chris Mack up front still trying to get back up to the lead. He clips the apron right there. He's going to slide way wide. Here comes Elliot Sattler to his inside. Sattler is going to try to take the lead. Chris Mack looks to be side drafting down the front straightaway a little bit there. Pulled them back slightly. And now he's going to shoot by him on the high side. He's going to clear the 38 car and take P3. Heading down the back straightaway into turn 3. Going to try to mount some sort of a run here on the L1 car. Joe Nemechek. And the 8 of Dale Jr. who is your race leader at the moment. 
but Chris Mack has a very fast car here today. The Pirates Racing struggled for most of the season, but now that 86 driver running third, showing what that team is made of and what he is made of, what he can do out here. Trying to back up his Riverside win and prove that he does belong here. It's been a rough couple of seasons here for the rookie driver. Seems like that team has been plagued with bad luck ever since Fred Jones was uh, removed. Oh, and then a wall goes to the 01. Nemechek tried to slide up in front of that 86 after Chris Mack had a good run off of turn four. The 86 tried to cut low and they just collided in the middle. And Nemechek went into the outside wall. Doesn't look to be too badly damaged. I don't see any real dents or anything. He just kind of kissed the wall. So, looks like he's going to be fine. But here comes Mark Martin underneath Elliot Sattler behind them. And Hermie Sattler merging back up onto the racetrack at the moment. Look out right in front of Mark Martin. And he's going to get held up in the middle of the three and four. Going to come up the track in front of his brother Elliot. Hermie's got nowhere to go. Elliot's got nowhere to go. Here comes Tony Stewart. Elliot's going to try to go by on the high side. He, he's up out of the groove a little bit. He's really not out of the groove, but unable to get it to work up at the very top. Don't see drivers go all the way up the racetrack that often. But Chris Mack trying to run down the eight of Dale Jr. Remember last season, it was two different drivers, but similar. Um, two different drivers that kind of go in the relations with these two drivers. It was Valeria Wolf in the 86 trying to prove herself and chasing down the 83 of Carrie Earnhardt, Dale Jr.'s brother. So, uh, a driver's best friend and a driver's brother now going at it at the same track that they went at went at it um, at last year. But man, this race is getting it's starting to heat up here because that 86 is flying. He does not care about his tires right now. And he's all over the back bumper of the 88. Dale Jr. Oh, he clipped the apron. Got a little loose there. It's not a very difficult thing to do. He's learning that the hard way. He's going to have to try to run him back down again here. Using the outside lane this time. He's going to get a, a little bit of a run down the back stretch. Trying to use the draft as well as he can. Gets as high up on the racetrack as he can. Entering three. He's going to dive down to the bottom. Try to get it to arc in as good as he can. Couldn't get that good of a run off of four. But he's still catching the eight car a little bit. Oh, he rockets it in on the high side that time and gets it the stick. Going to cut back down off the corner. He's got a big run down the back straightaway now. Where's he going to go? What's he going to do with it? Chris Mack trying to work his way past the 8 machine. He's did it again off of turn 4. He's going to get another run. But it's not good enough. He's going to send it in on the high side. He's there. Can he get it the stick? Not, not as well as he really wanted to. But he did get the run off the high side. A bump draft down the bunt back straightaway. He's going to punt the eight car a little bit. Tried to send him up the track. Dale Jr. having none of it. Stays right down on the bottom. Didn't seem to even phase Jr. here. And he's going to try it again. He moves him up the groove this time. He's all the way up the racetrack. He's there. He's to the inside. He's clear. New leader Chris Mack at Rockingham. Back to the front. Your pole sitter. Looking to lead some more laps here today. And we've got a clean, a long green flag run here. Junior, not even close to that 86. Chris Mack drove it in way deep, trying to, I guess, keep the 8 car away from him there. Got right up next to the wall. Here comes Junior back to his inside. Off of turn 4, he... 
tried to side draft a little bit. He's going to send it into one once again. This time gets it to stick. He's going to get a great run off of turn two. And we got lap traffic coming up as well as we head down the back straightaway. There's a lot of fast race cars out here. All trying to possibly win this race. But these two or three drivers are trying to win the championship. The 42 of Jamie McMurray currently in the best position of all three championship drivers right now. Further back, Jeff Gordon in the 24. Not too far back, but he's a little bit further back here. Just trying to work his way back up through the field after falling back a little bit. And Jimmy Johnson, after suffering some damage, trying to claw his way up through the field as well as he can. Bobby Labonte slow. One car stopped on the apron. And that's the 77 of Brendan gone. No caution. <clears throat> Looks like they got that car off the surface without any problems there as Dale Jr. has somehow gotten back by the 86. Not sure what exactly happened there, but he's managed to get back past. Now here comes the 8. To the outside. Oh! The 72! Tom Hubert goes into the outside wall. And that's going to bring out the caution. As the 72 got split by the leaders. Tried to go high, but the 86 was there. And just caused a wreck. Off of turn 4, Dale Jr. is going to have a big lead. No competition for it. Chris Mack fell back to 3rd. As he tried to chase down Mark Martin. Doesn't seem to have any damage on that 86 car. So that's good. At least no serious damage. Maybe a bit of light damage. But for the most part he seems fine. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back for the drop of the green flag after this. Welcome back to the MG Cup Series. Your new leader is the 30 of Johnny Sauter, who's in the fight for Rookie of the Year. Sauter stayed out while most of the field pitted. There's a lot of drivers that stayed out. You see the 12 of Newman. Everyone all the way back to Jeff Burton stayed off of pit road. Here comes Hermie Sattler down on the bottom of the racetrack. The lap car is going to restart on the inside here. Pace car is off. Here we go. Green flag back in the air. Johnny Sauter. Gonna try to drive. Whoa, Tom Hubert. Wasn't back up with the field. At the drop of the green was kind of passing cars on its way by. And he's gonna kind of get to the front, but with all that damage, it's not really going anywhere. Here comes Rusty Wallace trying to get to his inside. The 72, of course, probably going to be a little more aware this go around. <clears throat> and down the back stretch here. Here comes Chris Mack trying to rock it by. Oh, contact! Ricky Craven. That almost ended badly there. But what a save by Craven in the 32. Tom Hubert stays way high up off the, uh, up through the corner. And then immediately just, I'm not sure why he decided to dive down to the bottom, but I guess he found that necessary to get out of the way here. Jamie McMurray slicing his way up through the field. Trying to work his way back through the pack. Look at the 86 of Chris Mack. The entire inside line or outside line got checked up a little bit there. And now the bottom taking advantage of it. The 86, Chris Mack dives low. Contact with Terry Labonte. Around he goes. He's going to get clobbered by 
Scott Wimmer right in the door. Caution comes out. The Pirates Racing's bad luck is going to continue. Every time it looks like they're doing well, something happens mid-race or late in the race that takes them out. And that just demonstrated my point right there. The 86 has a little bit of damage. Looked like he was thinking about heading to pit road, but remember he had to race back and it probably wasn't bad enough to uh, be penalized for it and losing a lap or so. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back after this. Green flag back in the air. We're racing once again here from Rockingham Speedway and they're three wide up front but that's not for the lead that's Jeff Burton and Scott Riggs trying to get back on the lead lap they're bouncing off each other slow car exiting pit road that's Scott Wimmer almost caused a problem there he's gonna looks like he's diving back into the pits looks like he's stuck in that glitch where he's in this endless cycle of pitting and going back down oh Scott Riggs up into the outside wall that's gonna oh more trouble further down a big crash on the back straightaway looks to be about half the field involved Jamie McMurray was in the middle of it that's a championship contender involved in that wreck and the caution comes out again looks like three four five maybe cars getting back on the lead lap no Michael Waltrip's your leader only two cars getting back on the lead lap here Chris Mack was stuck right behind the 15 of Waltrip and a huge crash Brings out the yellow flag. Let's see what just happened on the back straightaway here. To bring out another caution. See the 10 up, up against the outside wall. The 02 tried to get down the track. Jeremy Mayfield is on the apron trying to slow the car down he drifts up the track and contact is made and then these guys go up into the outside wall hard a really bad angle to hit the wall and they ricochet back down the racetrack into oncoming traffic you see nowhere for Joe Nemechek to go and they just start playing a giant game of, of like a pinball machine or something as they bounce off one another and send cars down the racetrack collecting everybody that tried to escape down on the low side and heavy damage for the likes of Mike Skinner, JJ Yaley Jamie McMurray has some pretty bad damage he was in the middle of all that let's go on board with McMurray here you get back on the gas and trying to get through and then oh man some big hits there for the 42 thought they made it by the first wreck and they started wrecking again and there was nowhere for the rest of the field to go let's go on board with Casey Kane he's gonna get through but look at the chaos happening behind him let's go on board with Ryan Newman junkyard on the back straight away here Let's take another look it all happened so quickly see the 11 of Yaley with heavy damage that car out of the race whoops did not mean to do that but we'll just hop back into it here. I didn't see exactly which lap we were on, but I know we should be coming up on it pretty soon. A 
of contact on pit road as you saw car getting turned sideways there but we should be coming up on the restart we were just at everybody jockeying for position see the massive crash on the back stretch that brought out the caution gonna go ahead and look at the restart now the 86 restarting in front of the field but he's not the leader he's just trying to stay on the lead lap green flag back in the air Casey Mears another car is trying to stay on the lead lap not sure where the leader is he's way back there it's the six of Mark Martin he's got the five of Terry Labonte to us inside that's for second Jeff Gordon's your new leader Looking at three wide, further back, almost, and then, well, trouble! Hard into the wall goes Terry Labonte. A terrible crash, and a, another big crash on the front straightaway. They are wrecking them up big time as they head into turn one. The eight gets hit late in that. Dale Jr., one of the fastest cars of the day, is destroyed. Dale Jarrett gets rolled over late, and that's the second car to go upside down today. A wild crash on the front straightaway. Taking out another good chunk of the field, and the caution comes out again. And Terry Labonte went in hard. Man, I'll tell you what, Terry's had some of the worst luck this season in terms of crashes. He's had some of the hardest hits all year. And as we take a look at the replay, let's see what happened. Oh, Mark Martin got into the slow car. Hermie Sattler, uh, Sattler, a lap down, just trying to... Trying to Oh man, trying to collect as many points as possible and get a good finish. And that car absolutely destroyed in the rear end. Mark Martin gets into the back of him, sends him down the track, collects the five of Terry Labonte, and that is a head on impact. Really hard hit and a scary wreck. Very reminiscent of the crash that killed Dale Earnhardt in 2001. And I mean, a very similar angle as well. But luckily at lower speeds and with more safety equipment in the cars. You see the 6 of Mark Martin sliding the, down the bottom. Kyle Busch in the 84 is going to go into the outside wall. There's Sattler. He's going to collect Kenseth as well. Nowhere for Rusty Wallace to go. The track is going to get completely blocked at this point. Cars plowing into it, running over each other. There's Kyle Petty. Jimmy Johnson with a little bit of contact in that, not too much. Just not going to further damage that car any, or much more. And a little bit of contact down in the grass. Tony Stewart went down in the grass to avoid it, just plowed right into the door of Mark Martin, who was spinning through the grass. Obviously, once he got up into the grass, there was no control in it at that point. But then these guys, after, looks like Brendan Gunn made contact with Mark Martin, and he gets spun by Scott Riggs. The 99 of Jeff Burton slid in there after getting run over by Dale Jr. And that's going to collect a bunch of them. You see Ryan Newman. Oh, I mean, these guys in the grass avoiding it. No brakes. No way to slow down. They're obviously, they're in the grass. There's not grip down there. Labonte and Newman make contact. They collect Mayfield. Thirty-two bounces off the inside wall a little bit. He's gonna slide back up the racetrack. Track is completely blocked, and then what happened to Dale Jarrett? Um, looks like the outside lane got blocked, and then they kind of stacked up. The eighty-eight rear end gets up into the air, lands on the forty-five, and it just rolls him over. I mean, he just slowly gets toppled onto his roof strange wreck there that's going to bring out the red flag as that car is stuck upside down they're going to have to help him out but uh, red flag in the air we'll be right back after this welcome back to the MG Cup Series the green flag is back in the air and your race leader is Jeff Gordon Chris Mack back on the lead lap looking to save their day but meanwhile most of the field is out of the race Chris Mack has the fastest lap by two whole miles per hour that just shows how fast Papyrus Racing Chevrolet is today Jamie McMurray well he was in it in 13th he's fallen back a little bit since then but he's a lap down still on the track just trying to 
get as many points as possible and stay in the championship fight. Chris Mack, very loose there as he tries to work his way back up through the field. Where's he going to go? Brian Vickers in the 25 right in front of him. He's going to go down all the way down under the apron and get underneath that 25 car. Heading down into turn one, clears Vickers by a long shot there, like a, by about a mile. He's going to go through the middle between Jimmy Johnson and Ricky Rudd, and he's going to get that to work. Rudd up the racetrack off of turn four. He's going through the middle once again. In contact with Jeff Burton. These are slower, damaged race cars that are in the way. He does not need to waste any time. Um, messing with these guys here. He knows it too. He's trying to get right to the front. He's going to slide back in line behind the zero. So he was a little bit hesitant there. Very careful after what happened to Jimmy earlier in this race. Jimmy doesn't seem to be too mad about it to try to retaliate because he's thinking bigger picture. He's in seventh place right now. Make that sixth. So big picture. Obviously the championship not just a single race. At this rate, Jimmy Johnson is still your points leader. But Jeff Gordon, the race leader at the moment, trying to stay out in front. Chris Mack trying to work his way back up through the field. As you can see, let's go on board with that 86 car as he rockets his way up to the front. Oh, clipped the apron there. Didn't seem to hurt him too badly that time, but he did have to stay off the throttle for a split second longer than he would have liked to. He's going to drive it into turn one very deep that time there. Huge run off of turn two. He's catching the 16 of Biffle big time. He's catching Biffle by a lot here as we head through three and four. It was right down on the white line that time. Perfect that time by he's painted the white line he's gonna send it into one once again here oh just drove right into the back bumper to that 16 i don't think he meant to do that but looks like he tried to get into a hole that wasn't there he's gonna try the outside this time no he's gonna cut low try to get the speed and the run to the middle of the corner straighten it up a little bit on exit and he's gonna get a big run there dives down to the inside of very late lunge underneath Greg Biffle, but he's gonna he's gonna make it work. Clears him off of turn two, gonna try to take some more spots. These are some damaged race cars that are running um, P2 and P3 right now. That's Casey Kane and Bobby Labonte. Kane actually doesn't have any damage. It's just Labonte, a heavily damaged race car running third right now. Casey Kane in the nine. Gonna get held up by the 84 of Kyle Busch. Great job by Chris Mack using the 84 car as a pick. And now the 86 up front looking for the lead once again. He's got a huge run on Jeff Gordon. He's got the fastest car by a long shot here. And he's going to get right up to the bumper of the 24. And I dumped a little bit of air on a spoiler. He's now going to try to use a bit of the, a side draft. He's going to slide in behind Jeff Gordon here. And looks like the crew... Oh! Bumper to the back of the 24! Looks like the crew fixed up that right side damage pretty well. Doesn't seem to be hurting him at all here. Usually, uh, damage like that doesn't hurt hurt you, but... Oh! Into the back of the 02. Hermie Sattler a little bit indecisive. Now Jeff Gordon. Back to the inside of the 86. Chris Mack trying to get the run off the high side. Imagine if that was the finish right there. That would have been really close. But we're getting down to the end here. And we got a battle for the lead. They're side by side out in front. Chris Mack back down to the bottom with a crossover off of turn four. Imagine if this was the finish. Some hard racing between two Chevy drivers here. Chris Mack in the clear to 24 by a, a big margin off of turn two there.
Oh, and around goes Mark Martin off of turn four. Wait, the 86 is actually not the leader. I just realized he's a lap down. And Mark Martin gets spun off of turn four there. Bring you out another caution. Looks like the six got in the way of the 86. A little loose off of turn four. The 86 kind of came up a little bit. Spun the six out. Uh, I don't know, guys. You be the judge of that one. Kind of looked like... Especially the way the six didn't hit anything. Kind of looked like that was a bit intentional. Or if it wasn't, it definitely could have been avoided. And Chris Mack didn't really attempt to avoid that situation. As he got very aggressive with that six car. But the, the six goes around, bringing out another yellow. That's going to put the 86, or that's going to keep the 86 on the lead lap. So he'll have a chance to go for the win, but definitely a bit fishy there. How the six got turned around here on the front straightaway as he slid through the grass. Luckily, no contact, but it still brought out a yellow. And uh, I'll, be, I'll definitely be a talking point with uh, with our viewers here as I know a lot of people will feel like the 86 that did that on purpose to bring out a caution and get back on the lead lap some people may feel like the 6 was in the way as we saw he was way off the pace so I don't know people are going to be split on this one But uh, we're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back after this. Ugh, can't. There we go. Green flag back in the air. And look at this swarm of cars on the restart. They're all over the place here. Four wide. Down the back straightaway. Contact being made. Around goes Jeremy Mayfield into the in inside wall hard. And another car going around. Scott Wimmer makes contact. He chopped the nose of the 86 and goes around in the turn three. Caution comes out again. The zero won the race back to the yellow flag, which means Ward Burton is back on the lead lap. Greg Biffle is your leader. And what in the world just happened on that restart? That was some craziness on the restart there. Sterling Marlin and Jer Jeremy Mayfield made some contact there that sent the 19 into the inside wall look at this four wide off of turn two they're bouncing off each other I don't think Sterling realized they were four and they just run out of room it seems I don't know looks like the 40 tried to stay up the track the 19 looks like he was expecting the 19 to go back up the track the 19 had to hold this line because the 24 was to his outside and they just made contact and the round goes the 19 here on the back stretch the 40 into the inside wall as well. He's going to have some left side damage to that car. But obviously the 19 is hurt. Oh, and a little bit of contact there. Looks like attempted, uh, attempted retaliation from Mayfield. Ward Burton back on the lead lap. Your leader, Craig Biffle, will be right back after this. Welcome back to the MG Cup Series. We're about to go green once again here from Rockingham Speedway. And Greg Biffle is your leader. Scott Riggs in the 10, restarting on the inside. Green flag back in the air. With just a handful of laps left. Or a little more than a handful. Just got about 30, more than 30 to go. But still, green is back in the air. And... Riggs couldn't really get going too well. Look at the 8 of Dale Jr. with no hood. Trying to get by the 10 car here. Even when he's destroyed, that, that car still got a lot of speed in it. Looking at Jimmy Johnson. Trying to save himself a good day. He's currently running 4th right now. Trying to stay up front. And hold as many points as he possibly can. Jeff Gordon, not even, he's barely inside the top 10 right now. Whoa, contact with Dale Jarrett. 
Jarrett got upside down earlier. The car just kind of rolled over. Didn't really get any significant damage. The car able to keep running in this race. You see the roof damage on the 88 car, though. The scratches on the roof from when he got upside down there. Look at the 86 of Chris Mack. He's got nowhere to go. He's right in the middle. He's going to try to squeeze through the middle. Oh my goodness, what a move. Bold move by Chris Mack. And he was able to make it work. He's got a huge run down the back stretch. You can see the speed in that 86 machine as he slices his way through the field. Chris Mack catching Brian Vickers in the 25. Vickers is in third place. Johnson's falling way back. Really has no speed in that 48 car at this point. Just trying to hold on to track position as well as he can. The 25 of Vickers, and that's a lap car in front of them. Where's Mack going to go? He's going to try to get underneath the 10. Checked up in front of him, and around they go. And the hard crash upside down as Scott Riggs. He rolls back down the track, collecting Dale Jarrett. And a bunch more. The 86 of Chris Mack is destroyed. Look at that 86 car. As he spun back down in front of traffic and collected a couple of other cars. Caution is out once again. And another big crash. A third car here today going upside down. And this time it's the 10 of Scott Riggs. Who seemed to just be kind of slow on the top. Chris Mack tried to get underneath it seems. But... I'm not sure. It looked like he was kind of riding behind them. He was kind of stuck back there in the 10. Kind of in the way. I wouldn't put that on the 10 or the 86. It looked like they were both just kind of kind of a, a lack of communication. So I wouldn't put that solely on one driver. Just a lack of communication. And that sends the 10 car up into the outside wall and over. And watch the 86. He's going to slide back down the racetrack and collect a few more. Watch this hard hit. Nowhere for Johnny Sauter to go. Jimmy Johnson in the 48 gets collected as well. Johnson's already had a rough day. Watch the 10 roll down the track right into the path of the 88. Got hit in the undercarriage by Dale Jarrett. The zero Ward Burton gets a piece of it. There's Jamie McMurray, Tom Hubert. Oh, the 40 of Sterling Marlin gets the front end crunched in there. Or crunched up, I should say. The 10 of Riggs still able to run after rolling a couple times and getting hit. The 88 of Dale Jarrett just stops on track. Looks like the car leaking some fluid, fluid there. Jarrett, who was already upside down, ran into an upside down car. So he's... He's been upside down himself on top of people, and now he's got a car on top of him. It's been a wild, rough day for Dale Jarrett here today at Rockingham. Man, it's been a really weird day for Jarrett, actually. But, uh, tough break for all these guys involved. We're gonna get back rolling again here. But we know the 86 of Chris Mack is absolutely heated at the moment. But, uh, Mark Martin's fans will call, probably call this karma after what happened early in the race. Because I know they're sure that he brought that caution out on purpose. But look at this. Casey Kane with a huge run off of turn four. Greg Biffle kind of slowed through three and four there. The nine of Kane right on his bumper now as he tries to take the lead. Casey Kane, the rookie, a lot of speed in that Ray Evernham number nine car. That Rick Hendrick 24 right behind him though. Kane might not hold on to that lead very long. Jeff Gordon has the second fastest car. Okay, well, not second fastest. But he has, uh, he's, his teammate has got the second fastest car on the track here today. So that, that explains the speed that 24 car has as well. Jimmy Johnson was caught up in the wreck. Chris Mack was also caught up in the wreck. You see Dale Jr., Johnny Sauter, pretty much everyone in the top five in the fastest lap chart. Top six actually have been caught up in wrecks. Casey Kane has one of the fastest laps, but Jeff Gordon has been more consistent over the long run. So it'll be interesting to see how this plays out. Can speed 
outlast consistency. Jeff Gordon doesn't seem to be fast enough exactly to catch or pass that nine machine, but has he clearly has some speed in that 24 car. Now he's going to pull to the inside. See, this is what I meant by speed versus consistency. He had a good corner through one and two there. Trying to have a even better turns three and four down the front stretch. Imagine if this was the finish. I've said that three times today, I know. Casey Kane would have edged out Gordon at the line there for his first career win, but we still got about almost 18 laps to go. Coming up on lap 100 this time by. Jeff Gordon, he's the new leader. Let's look uh, further back. A lot of single file going on right now. Michael Walker pulls to the inside of Mark Martin. That is not for position. Martin's a lap down. Walker up on the lead lap. It's kind of like a junkyard out here. Out here. Only nine cars on the lead lap. Jimmy Johnson in 20th, five laps down. We've only got about 20 cars on track right now. So Jimmy Johnson, the last car on the track right now as he heads down pit road, but still going to be a solid point stay for him. Three wide off turn four. Contact was made, but they're going to keep it straight. Michael Walter passes the 29 and the 25 on the exit of turn, exit of turn four. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be back to you with the finish here from Rockingham. Welcome back to Rockingham Speedway. Jeff Gordon has a huge lead. He's out in front with a two-second lead, almost three-second lead over Casey Kane in the nine. Kane having a good run here today, running second. It's a good turnaround for him after a rough season. He's been upside down three times this season. We've mentioned this before. Wow, Atlanta, seven to nothing over Houston right now in the World Series. Looks like that they could possibly be the night that they win this whole thing. I would personally love that, love for that to happen because, uh, yeah. Atlanta, being from Georgia, they're my team. Every team, every Atlanta team is my team uh, as far as sports is concerned. Uh, I'm, I'm loving this at the moment. Really excited. Just not showing it because gotta stay professional. Gotta finish this thing off here. Jeff Gordon, just a handful of laps away from winning this thing. As he gets by Rusty Wallace in the two, the nine of Casey Kane. Running second. Hoping for more lap traffic to slow down at 24, but it doesn't look like he'll really, that'll really work for him, even if he does get it. Jimmy Johnson seems to be stuck in the endless cycle of entering and exiting pit road, just like Scott Wimmer. see Wimmer doing it at the moment. He's gonna kinda just swipe through his pit stall. He's gonna come to a stop and immediately get rolling again. Looks like that's what the 48 team is doing as well. A really annoying glitch for NR2003, but this game from 2003, what do we expect? I'm not gonna come I'm not gonna complain about it. 13 Definitely not 13. Not going to complain about it uh, 18 years later. Um, especially when the company is dead. But you see Jeff Gordon putting people a lap down. Like it's, just, it's a Sunday drive and he's just kind of cruising around. He's going to 
come up when his teammate Brian Vickers is running seventh. Put him a lap down pretty soon here. As we've got just two laps to go, and Casey Kane reeling in that 24 car as he as they go through the lap traffic. I think Kane need a, needed a little bit more help or a little more time to be able to catch that 24. But it looks like today it's just not going to be his day to get that first win off of turn four to 24. Gordon checks up as he takes the white flag and gets underneath his teammate. One more time around for Jeff Gordon. Casey Kane hoping for some sort of a miracle to happen here. Maybe an engine failure, a tire failure, or something. Whatever it may be. But heading into turn three for the final time through three and four, Jeff Gordon is going to come off of turn four and win yet again here from Rockingham Speedway. I believe a sixth win of the season. Jeff Gordon, man, there was no stopping him today. As he gets that win, but Jimmy Johnson and Jamie McMurray salvaging their days as well as possible. Jimmy, 15 laps down at the end, finishes 20th place. So there's only 20 cars left in the on the track. It's less than half the field. Jamie McMurray, two laps down, 14th place, but uh, keeping his, his get, getting as many points as possible, keeping that lead. Uh, as little as they possibly can but this is going to definitely help Gordon and McMurray in the points but uh, yeah they're still about a hundred uh, more than a hundred points back so they're going to need a a early DNF from Jimmy Johnson at Homestead if either of these two want to win the championship but that's going to do it hope you guys enjoyed if you did hit that like button subscribe and I hope to see you guys next time until then peace